I feel like this video is calling me out. Oh, this one's rough. And what is my excuse? I don't, I don't have one. <sighs> Hey, it's Annie. Welcome to or back to my channel. How are you? I'm okay. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. It's um it's it's been it's been fine. It's been fine. I've been a little bit ill, but I am doing all right. I might have gotten a job today. So, we'll see. Anyway, today I am going to be going through my physical TBR. As you can see, my bookshelf is back there. It is pretty much just these two shelves, but then on the bottom shelf, I have, I think maybe three books that I haven't read, but they're hardback and they don't fit in the shelves. In a minute, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna get all the books I haven't read and I'm gonna bring them here. I'm sitting on my bed right now. I know you guys don't really get this angle very much, but I just felt like filming on my bed today. I know it might not be, the cutest background but it makes me feel more booktubery because this way you can see that i actually do own books and i don't have one of those like massive bookshelves to sit in front of to like prove my validity you know what i mean i have like this weird imposter syndrome where i'm like what if people don't think i actually own books i do i feel like that was so rambly this intro does not need to be longer than two minutes which it is now anyway i'm gonna go and i'm gonna pull off all the books I haven't read, which I think is a lot, and bring them here, and then we'll go through them together. And I have 32 books on my shelf <laughs> that I haven't read, including, I'm counting this as two because it's a bind up of the three books in the Little Woman series. So I guess I'll talk about this one first. This is Little Woman. <laughs> I have talked about this book a lot on my channel because this is the most gorgeous book that I own. Clearly, it is very heavy. I love Little Woman and my family got me this copy. Also look at, look at that. I've read Little Woman many times, but I've never read Little Men or Joe's Boys, which are like the two other books in the series. Maybe there's more, I don't really know, but I want to at some point soon, although I keep saying I'm gonna get to it and I don't, reread Little Woman and then read the other two books in this. If you don't know what Little Woman is about, where have you been? Because they did that remake with Timothy Chalamet and Florence Pugh. The unpopular opinion, I don't like that remake. It is about these four little women. <coughs> they're four sisters and they're all a bit different. Like there's Jo, who is my favorite. She's kind of the main character of Little Woman. She is like headstrong and loves to write and is rebellious and kind of like a prankster like she's not like other girls and then there's meg who's actually the oldest and she's like more sensible amy is kind of just a spoiled brat she has her merits too but she's kind of like the baby of the family and then there's beth who is like very soft-spoken and sweet and really good at the piano and you just follow them throughout childhood to their mid-20s maybe early 20s in the first book so yeah this was one of my favorite books growing up i just love this story so much and i really can't wait to reread it and get to the other two finally hopefully that will happen soon i'm kind of going through these in no particular order it's just 
the way that I've laid them on my bed. Next up, I have The Fraud by Zadie Smith. I have this gorgeous hardback and I actually, wait, oh, oh, I like this. I haven't seen this in a while. I like the black on black, but this color is kind of throwing me off. I don't know. Anyway, I do actually have this signed by Zadie Smith. I met her and went to the signing for this. So it's special to me, but I still have not read it. It was really cool to see Zadie Smith talk about this. Unfortunately, I've never read a Zadie Smith book. I tried to read White Teeth, but I couldn't get into it. And I was reading it for uni and I didn't finish it on time. So I had to move on. I really want to get to this. I hope it's my thing. I can't really tell if it will be. I'm not really sure what this is about. I think this is based on a real life court case, but this is a fictionalized version of it. It's set in the 1800s and that's pretty much what I know. This book feels really nice in my hands. I do really want to try it. I'm just a little bit scared because Zadie Smith is so smart and I'm just really scared that I'll read it and I won't love it. But I need to get over that and just, just read it. Next up, this one I need to read really soon. The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. I feel like this is the perfect time to read this. It's summer. This is about a pirate mommy that is just doing her private thing. Oh my God, that's so shiny. She is in retirement and then she gets called out to do one last mission. That's what I know about this. Also, look how gorgeous this copy is. I'm so, like, I just really need to read this. The dust jacket is beautiful, but I mean, this is nice. It like feels really lovely, but look, look at these. Oh my God. It's just, it's so stunning. And then this is like the US cover, I think is on the back. Maybe I'll read this in June. Don't hold me to that, but I would love to read this next month. Oh, this one's rough. This one I DNF'd recently and I completely, I, I swear, I'm going to go back to it. Trust the Emerald Sea. I started tabbing it. I talked about this recently. I swear I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It's about a girl named Tress and she sets off on this adventure to go save her boy toy and it's a princess bride retelling and i love the princess bride and it's by brandon sanderson so i know i'm going to love this i was just not in the right mood this one makes me really sad so let's stop talking about it the next two i had to read for uni and i just didn't have time i sold recently a lot of books that i didn't need anymore because i've now finished my degree i kept these two because i do want to go back to them the first one is to the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I kind of hate this cover of it. It was a really cheap copy. I think I got a little bit over halfway through this, but that was like two years ago. If you know Virginia Woolf, you know that she writes novels where like, it's not that nothing happens, like a lot happens, but it's more of like the experience of reading it. So in this one, it's just about this family and they're at, I don't know if it's their vacation home maybe, but the vibes are really great. And this kid in the family wants to go to the lighthouse, but the dad's like, it's gonna rain. We can't go to the lighthouse. That's all I remember, but it's really good. So I do want to actually read this. And then the next one, I did not even start it, but I had to buy it for uni once I found out that I was gonna have to read it. Unfortunately, it was the last book assigned at the end of term and I had to write like three essays. So I didn't read it, but Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I know I'm gonna be obsessed with this because actually I lied, I did start it. I think I read a lot of the first chapter and I annotated it because we had to look at it in class. I really went in with that and it's probably the most gorgeous couple pages I've ever read in anything. So basically Dorian Gray is like, I think he's super vain and then he gets a portrait painted of him so that he can stay young and beautiful forever. But like as he doesn't change, the portrait changes to kind of reflect his depravity is what I understand. I really need to read this because I know I'm going to be obsessed. This one I've had for way too long and every time I look at my bookshelves it's like my eyes skip over it. I never even think to pick this up and that's The Goldsmith by Donna Tartt. I have this super, it's kind of battered like used copy 
that I picked up at some charity shop at some point or other. What is this even about? It's about a boy and his mommy and it's about a 13 year old boy named Theo. He loves his mom and he miraculously s survives a catastrophe that tears the family apart. He lives in New York City. He's taken in by a family and he's dealing with his grief for his mother. Oh, oh. He clings to the thing that most reminds him of her, a, a small captivating painting that ultimately draws him into the criminal underworld. Most of that synopsis was not sounding interesting, but that last sentence did kind of get me. I always wonder if I should just give this away because it is so long. I mean, what is it? It's like almost 900 pages and I never even think to read this. I have to check it out at some point. Oh my God, another Zadie Smith. I forgot. I have this. <laughs> Another Oxfam book, apparently. Spring time, or nope, that was completely wrong. NW by Zadie Smith. I think it might be in Open Water, which I have back there actually, that one of the characters says that this is their favorite Smith book. I could be wrong. I don't really know what this is about. I love this cover though. I have to say, I think it's really cool. Okay, so it's a tragic comedy. It follows four Londoners after they've left their childhood council estate, grown up and moved on to different lives. So it's probably going to deal with like the class system in England, which is super interesting. After a chance encounter, they each find that the choices they've made, the people they once were and are now can suddenly rapidly unravel a portrait of modern urban life. I really want to read this, especially because I'm probably moving to London in a couple months. I think this could be really cool to read like once I've moved or when I'm about to move. I do really want to get to this. Also, I just noticed like the text on her name is like a city map. <sighs> I know I would love that book. This one is super random. I think this could be a hidden, a hidden gem. I've never heard of this. I just picked it up. A little free library in California, I think like last summer. It's heavy, why is it so heavy? The True Memoirs of Little K. Isn't this cover kind of cute? It's like, it's kind of adorable. Definitely a cover pickup for me. I really should actually attempt to read this at some point. I think it's about an opera singer. So there's someone that's exiled in Paris and she is 100 years old and her name is Mathilde. And she writes down her memoirs before all that she believes to be true is forgotten. So a lifetime ago, ah, she was a prima ballerina in Russia. She's looking back on her tumultuous life. Now this sounds like tea. This sounds like drama. Let me see. I, I bet I would like this. Oh, so it kind of goes into the great intersection of the Russian court and the Russian theater and like the Russian rev revolution. Oh, oh. She had a romance with like the star, the star, how do you say that? The Starovich, Starovich? The Tsar Prince, like whoever's gonna be the Tsar next. I don't know much about Russia, but I would love to read this. I'm actually, I think this is actually a good process for me to go through because it's reminding me that the books I own have synopses that I actually do find interesting. I just need to actually sit down and Read them. Next up, I bought this probably like November this year and it is so chunky. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha San Shannon. Now I know there's a lot of people that I actually really trust and adore that don't like this book. So who knows, maybe I won't like it either, but I do remember I was at Waterstones and I was really wanting to buy something. So I was just in that mood. Oh, so look at this map, that's very nice. And I read, I think the first like 30 pages or something and I was enthralled. I don't know if it's gonna live up to that. I'm also obsessed with this cover. I hope I like this. I don't even know. I don't even wanna know really what it's about. I'm just gonna read you the three little sentences here. A world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. That's all I wanna know because I like the fact that this is a standalone fantasy, even though now it has a prequel. I love a fantasy, but I do tend to start a bunch of series and then I'm like scrambling to finish them. So this could be cool to like, just have it be one and done. And if I do really love it, I can read the prequel. Oh, next up, I got this literally on Saturday, The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. I love every book ever 
by Holly Jackson. So there is one I haven't read, which is the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder novella, but I have that on my Kindle, so I should read it soon. And I simply had to get this. I have a hardback of Five Survive. Waterstones came out with the most sexy, gorgeous editions of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. <laughs> They're in hardback and I am praying that I get them for my birthday. If I don't, I'll buy them for myself for my birthday. But I kind of have this goal to get all of Holly Jackson's book in hardcover. And this is my second purchase. So this, from what I understand, is about a girl named Belle. And her mother is Rachel Price, who went missing under very mysterious circumstances when Belle was quite young. And now Netflix is making a documentary about the disappearance and like the unsolved case and then Really randomly, Rachel Price turns up again and there's some sort of mystery about, I think she like doesn't remember what happened to her or she says she doesn't remember. So Belle is trying to like figure out what happened. And I'd imagine she's also trying to navigate her relationship with her newly reappeared mother. So it sounds really good. I just love everything that Holly Jackson writes. Young adult thriller and thriller in general is not my typical genre but there's something so captivating about everything she writes and i'm so excited also you can hear i have neighbor or maybe neighbors plural that love to practice instruments and they are really good so if you can hear someone playing the trumpet right now that is why i love this on the cover i don't love this but i also love how like smooth this is and I love these end papers that are like film. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm really excited about this. I actually have a 24 hour readathon that should be coming out next week. And I think I'm going to be reading this in that. Like, these next two are part of a series. So I own the whole Broken Earth series. The first one is the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. This is the second one, The Obelisk Gate. And here is The Stone Sky. I read the fifth season about a year and a half ago and I really loved it. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but I think I'd have to probably reread it or at least read a really good summary before jumping into either of these. But it was so five stars that I had to go out and buy everything. So I did. These are also really nice. They feel really look. I don't know why I'm giving you every book I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, and this feels really nice. And like, they probably smell good. Oh yeah. No, nah, this one smells good. The fifth season is about, oh, it's, it's really complicated. Basically it's set in this world where natural disasters happen like all the time and tectonic plates are shifting a lot but in like big ways that will cause these natural disasters. And then there are people who can kind of earthbend and they can... I don't know. I've kind of forgotten. Maybe I should reread the first one. We follow three different timelines, three different women of different ages in the first book. And it is fantastic. It's like a very literary fantasy novel. Some of it is in second person, which I love. So yeah, I need to reread the first one or just at least get to these two because I'm really excited about them. Next up, I got this for Christmas, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I've never read Daphne du Maurier and I really want to. I watched the movie Rebecca and it was fine, but I think the story is going to be a lot better when I read it, I think I could be really into this. It's about this woman and then she marries this guy and he has this ex-wife named Rebecca and her presence is just always felt throughout their marriage. And he lives in this really cool estate. I think it's sort of by the seaside and it's very atmospheric. Really wanna read this soon. Okay, continuing on. I have Death in Her Hands by Otessa Mangefe. I do also own that Bona, but I think I must have left it in the States because it's not here with me. I've read My Year of Rest and Relaxation and that Bona. I love Otessa Mangefe and I really do want to read this. I just always forget I need to get better about reading my physical TBR. Basically, this one is about, I, I think there's this like old woman, she's walking her dog and she comes across this like note on the ground in the woods and it says 
her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body, but there's no dead body right there. So she's trying to like solve this mystery. I really want to read it. And I just, I love Otessa Majfe's mind. These next two are part of a series that I want to, I want to actually reread all of them. There's five books total. This is the first one, Dragon Spell. These are the two I haven't read and it's Dragon Fire and Dragon Light. These are the fifth and sixth, wait, these are the fourth and fifth books in the series. I think it's just called the Dragon Spell series this was one of my favorite series growing up it is a fantasy series about this girl named kale like the leaf and it's actually spelled just like that as well she basically comes across a dragon egg in her little small town and she's an orphan and she lives in a very high fantasy world and there's different like species and stuff but not ones that you'd actually always hear of like it's not like they just do like dwarves and stuff like that. Like there's actually a whole cool system of like different species in this and it's really cool. The town elders are like, oh my God, you have to go to Vendela, which is like the, um, please tell me that there's a map in this. Here we go. Oh my God, this is my childhood. So she has to like go to the big city and tell like the people in charge, hey, I found a dragon egg because I don't remember, maybe dragons are rare or something, but she's gotta go. But then on the way, she gets a little bit like detoured. She stumbles upon like 10 more dragon eggs. The dragon eggs in this, they quicken to whoever they're close to while they're like waiting to be hatched. So she holds them like close to her in this little like, sash thing and they all quicken to her. So then when they hatch, it's like she's like their mom basically. And the dragons all have like their own personalities. Okay, sorry, that's kind of a tangent. I'm obsessed with this series. Then she ends up having to go on this quest because there is a really important dragon that she has to communicate with. And she seems to have an affinity for dragons and there's some sort of war. I read this last probably when I was like, 15 or 16, but I've read this series many times. However, I don't think I've ever finished Dragonfire or maybe I have and I just haven't finished Dragon Light. For some reason, I never end up finishing this series and it's never because I'm not having a good time. It has always just been because I have other things to do. The interesting thing about this series is that it is Christian fantasy. I'm an atheist now. So I wanna do a video where I read the whole series and think about whether I still like them. I'm pretty sure I will. I wonder if they're actually super Christian and I don't remember, but I want to basically just see if I still enjoy them as an atheist. The next two are also part of a series, the Veronica Speedwell series. This is the fourth one and the one I need to read next. This is the fifth one. So I've read the first three and I'm obsessed with this series. If you have been watching this channel, you know this is about Veronica Speedwell. It is Victorian historical like mystery romance. It is about Veronica Speedwell. She is a lepidopterist, which means that she collects and studies butterflies. She teams up with this guy Stoker, who's a natural historian, and they solve all sorts of cute mysteries in Victorian England. And they have this amazing slow burn romance. And the characters in these books are just unmatched unmatched even the side characters crazy stuff we'll be getting to these soon i'm also doing a reread of the series even though i'm only three books in and i'm gonna try to rank them as i go to figure out my like ranking order next the only sally rooney book i have not read although apparently she's coming out with one soon beautiful world where are you i think i would like this I did not actually love normal people that much i loved the show they didn't love the book I knew it was really well done, but I just, it was not for me. But I loved Conversation with Friends. Unfortunately, the show for Conversations with Friends, I couldn't get past the first 30 seconds. So we'll see how I feel about this. This is a lovely floppy book. And I think it's just about a bunch of people in their 20s. And that's all I want to know about it. Maybe I'll read this soon because I feel like it does kind of give summer vibes. Oh, that's kind of cute. That end paper. What is this one? Oh, that's cute. I do hate this thing. This is my pet peeve for books. Like, I, I don't care that it's a New York Times number one bestseller. Just give me a full cover. Thank you. Hopefully we'll read this soon. Next up, I am actually reading this in a fantasy reading vlog coming soon. 
So we'll read this in the next couple weeks. The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is book three in Mistborn Era One. So it's the end of the first Mistborn trilogy. This series is so good. I say that, but I really only liked the second one. The first one I felt very weird about, which I know is unpopular. I think a lot of people's favorite in this trilogy is the first one. It's very complicated. I am trying to make this video a bit of a shorter one, so I won't go crazy with the synopsis, but it's about this girl, Vin, and she is in this like lower class of people and she's lived as like a thief her whole life in this big city and there's a really interesting magic system and this guy that's a revolutionary figure his name is kel meets ben and he's like hey you want to join my squad and we're gonna throw over the whole empire so that's kind of what's happening in the first book the plot has gone places since the first book but i'm just really excited for the end of this series i loved the second book so much so i can't wait to see what's gonna happen and how it's all gonna wrap up so this one fortunately I'm actually reading soon because going through all these has made me feel a little bit bad about the fact that I keep buying books and I don't read them. The next three I'm going to talk about together. I have for the longest time been saying that Bunny is one of my favorite books ever. I have since bought all of her other books and I haven't read them. I keep saying I'm going to do a video where I read them all and like rank them and see if I really love her as an author because I've heard from some other people that her other books just don't really do it. <sighs> so we'll see, that would suck, honestly. But I also wanna reread Bunny as part of that video. Her first book she wrote is called 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. I think I could be really into this. It is 13 chapters, but I've heard they're sort of set up almost as like short stories, but they follow the same characters. And it's about this girl going through a sort of self-love journey. And I think it's gonna deal with eating disorders and all that sort of stuff. I am really intrigued by this one. This is the one I'm most excited to read and that's All's Well. This one is about a production of All's Well that ends well. The main character has chronic pain issues. My phone keeps running out of storage. I'm trying to record and it's really rude. Anyway, I have chronic pain and I never read books that have that sort of representation in it. I don't think it's that they don't exist, but like it's hard to find them. Also, this book is so floppy and lovely. I love Shakespeare and I'm so excited to read this one in particular. Finally, we have Rouge. Oh my God, I need to get this like sticker stuff off because that is disgusting. This is her latest release. Also, I love this that it's like a mirror. I'm gonna take off the dust jacket though because it is looking so gross. I pre-ordered this and it is actually signed, which is really cool. But this one is like a beauty in the, not a beauty in the beast retelling. Maybe it is, I don't think so. It's about this girl and her mom and her mom is obsessed with beauty and so is she and things get freaky and weird. I really hope I like these. I just have heard from some people I trust that the rest of her books just don't hit the same. Maybe I'll try to do this video this summer because I've been saying I've been do going to do it since I started this channel. Next up, I have a little book of essays, but also kind of a memoir type of scenario. Slow Days Fast Company by Eve Babbitt. I've owned this for a while and I am really interested in it. I recently read a book by Eve Babbitt. I talked about it in my last video. I liked it okay. She was kind of an icon in the 60s and 70s in LA. What's so interesting to me about this is that it's her dealing with, I think either unrequited love or maybe it's just like, she's pursuing this guy. She makes private asides to him throughout the whole book, like little messages for him. And I'm so intrigued by this. It says, Virginia Woolf said that people read fiction the same way they listen to gossip, which is actually so true. So if you're reading this at all, then you might as well read my private asides written so he'll read it. I have to be extremely funny and wonderful around him just to get his attention at all. And it's a shame to let it all go for one person. And this is what intrigues me about this book so much. Hopefully I'll read this soon. How many times have I said that in this video? But this one is short. Like this should be easy. This next one I've had for so long and I've constantly been so excited about it, but also intimidated because it's Russian literature. The Master of Margarita by Mikhail Bulga... 
Bulgakov. The devil comes to Moscow and it's weird and I really, really, really want to read this, but I'm afraid and I need to get over that. Yeah, wait, so not only does the devil come to Moscow, but he's disguised as a magician and he brings like a whole band of other people with him, including a talking cat and an expert assassin. That sounds so fun. I feel like this video is calling me out because I've owned Piranese for a while. I think it's been about two years now and I still haven't read it. And why not? Because it's so short, it will be really amazing. And what is my excuse? I don't, I don't have one. I also, I remember when I bought this, my mom was visiting and I got this in Oxford and I read the first 30 or 40 pages at a cafe with her. And I thought it was just amazing. And I was like, oh, I'll read that soon. This is about this guy that lives in this really weird place. It's kind of like a big house. And then there's different sections of the house. And like, sometimes there'll be big waves in a part of the house or something like that. And this guy is going through, Piranese is going through like, cataloging thing the house is like full of secrets i don't i think i'm explaining this well okay this says I'll, I'll read the back i hate doing this but i'll read the back piranese lives in the house capital h perhaps he always has then messages begin to appear scratched out in chalk on the pavements there is someone new in the house but who are they and what do they want lost texts must be found secrets must be uncovered the world that Piranese thought he knew is becoming strange and dangerous. The beauty of the house is immeasurable, its kindness infinite. I just know that this is gonna rock my world and I'll recommend it to everyone I know. And I think that kind of scares me away from reading it, which is dumb. Moving on. I don't actually really own many thrillers. I mean, I guess I own Holly Jackson's book, but this one I picked up super randomly. This is Magpie. It's about, I think this couple moves into this house. This woman like moves in with them and there's something wrong about her. And I actually did read the first chapter of this for like a try a chapter video. It seemed really cool. So I do want to pick this up soon. We are almost done. <laughs> so next up I have A Movable Fe Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This I tried to read and I got a little bit bored, but I keep it around because one day I'm going to go to Paris and I'm going to read this. This is like his memoir yeah ernest hemingway's memoir of paris in the 1920s he references specific places he name drops a lot of people and i found it kind of interesting but at the time when i read it i hadn't been to paris yet then i went to paris and i remembered this book but i didn't have it with me and now i have it and i haven't been back to paris one day i'm gonna go to paris and when i go to paris i'm gonna bring this book <laughs> So the only thing stopping me from reading this is that I'm not in Paris. But it's almost more motivation for me to go back. My phone is actually screaming at me to stop filming and stop using up all my storage. So I'm going to go through these last three as quickly as possible. A Dowry of Blood. I just picked this up last week. Look how beautiful it is. If I don't love this, I do I don't know what I'm going to do. This is written in second person. It is from the point of view of, of one of Dracula's wives, Constanta. And it's basically like her being like, uh, this is why we had to kill you. And I'm obsessed with it. I have read the first maybe 10 pages and I'm going to read this as soon as possible. Okay, I'm really motivated to read this. I'm gonna do it. Then we have The Collector by John Fowles. This is about a guy, I think he's in Paris. Nope, he's in Sussex. Anyway, this is about a guy that collects butterflies like Miss Veronica Speedwell, but in a dark and creepy way. And one day he decides to collect a girl. It's a classic, I really want to get to this. I think I'd really like it. Last but not least, I'm actually gonna read this one really soon too, because I've recently been in my manga era my brother got this for me for Christmas, No Longer Human by Junji Ito. The original novel is by Osamu Desai. I hope I'm saying that right, but Junji Ito rewrote it with like the art in manga form. Look how stunning this is. What do you mean? What? So yeah, since I've been loving Yona of the Dawn so much and since I also love horror so much no reason why i shouldn't read this 
from what I know, this is really creepy and the author of the original novel is said to have killed himself after writing the story because he was so disturbed. That is really sad, but I do really want to read this. I've also never read any Junji Ito before, but I just think I would love it. Oh, okay, that was all the books on my physical TBR. I need to get better at reading it. I think I need to make a goal where I need to at least read one physical book that I own a month. I think that's doable. I'm putting that into place now. Please hold me accountable. <laughs> if you like this video, you want to see more from me, consider subscribing if you would like. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It does help me out. Thank you for watching. I have lots of plans for this channel in the future and I'm so excited to be getting back to making videos and posting again. So I can't wait.